the schedule for uh, this slot is uh, a presentation of with the title State of the Claren Infrastructure. Um, and this is, of course, um, a wide notion, uh, which is uh, to be interpreted in a narrow way because uh, already this morning, uh, Dieter gave uh, an extensive introduction or presentation on uh, uh, the technical part of the Claren Infrastructure. Um, so this is complementing whatever Dieter has uh, presented this morning. And I should also say that the focus of this presentation is the part of the uh, Claren work plan that is carried out by uh, the, um, uh, mainly carried out by the central organization. But as you may uh, know and or have understood by now, um, in terms of the volume of work uh, that's happening in, in Claren overall, less than 10% is done at the central level. So I will tell you a lot of things that are only relevant and possible given the fact there is this other 90% uh, that's happening in the countries. The national co uh, uh, consortia uh, contribute an enormous volume of work and knowledge and expertise, um, typically in the context of research infrastructures called in-kind contributions. Um, but it's, it's important to keep that in mind when you listen to my story. Okay. Um, once more, uh, uh, when you talk about where you are um, and the progress made, um, it's always good to take a starting point. Yeah, yesterday, we celebrated the 10th uh, anniversary, um, which is setting the scene um, for, the, uh, for the question, where does Clarence stand? Um, but of course, uh, in this report, I will mainly go into the details of the things that were achieved. Uh, in the, the last one and two years. But the celebration, uh, I think, is uh, is a very nice element to, uh, to be aware of. Okay, so where do we stand? Um, as you know, we have a strategy. Uh, the current strategy is uh, um, covering the period two 2021 and 2000, uh, till 2023, so including next year. Um, it's uh, a strategy that has as a title, language as social and cultural data, and as a subtitle, Enhanced Infrastructural Support for Research Based on Language Materials. Um, this is uh, um, the overarching concept that we are, uh, um, yeah, that is the, the basis for our work. Um, it's good to, to also address the organizational uh, aspects a little bit. So uh, Clarin is, is a consortium of, uh, Clarin Eric is a consortium of countries. Uh, they provide the, the basic fee for all the activities at the central level. Uh, and on top of that, they, they have their national budgets for the activities uh, in the countries. The number of countries is uh, has become rather stable now because we are with so many. So there are 22 countries and two observer countries. So 22 full member countries and two observer countries. And together, um, they managed to uh, bring a federated service offer with access to uh, fair data uh, for chainable tools for over 60 centers, on, among which 25 uh, certified B centers and a network of uh, K centers, also 25. Um, it's strongly aligned with the open science agenda. There are many definitions, of course, but in many countries, this has become uh, a notion that is understood maybe not in a unique way, but uh, in a clear enough way for people to be able to work together on things that we typically uh, describe as interoperability. So we have this long history of 10 years and even more working towards interoperability. Uh, and in the technical sense, that has been explained also by, by Dieter. Um, in terms of um, uh, the more conceptual layers, uh, we have a few... Um, flagship initiatives, our uh, uh, priority activities, and am among, uh, among them uh, are the Clarion resource families. Um, it's a pillar for harmonization uh, in order to advance the collaboration between the countries and um, to increase the metadata quality and to have alignment um, with disciplinary and multidisciplinary agendas uh, 
especially with uh, the aim to enable and support comparative research across language, uh, languages and, and regions. It's an initiative that started a number of years ago and it's, it's growing uh, um, into something rather big and also very visible because um, yesterday you got a presentation of this SSH open marketplace and uh, I was informed that just this morning, finally the last bits and pieces were uh, prepared that, uh, and now the Claren resource families are also visible in this SSH open marketplace. Things are growing um, uh, and, and um, there's room for lots of progress and, uh, uh, but we are really getting somewhere. Then there is the parliament project, which is also a sort of spin-off of the resource families because the whole idea um, was uh, inspired by what uh, was already achieved two years ago uh, under the name of Claren resource families, but it's uh, um, the project aimed towards the creation of a comparable uh, corpus of parliamentary data. There was a first release last year. Um, then uh, the, the initial release was for 70 languages. And now oh, I, think, I think the number is missing in the slide, but we're now uh, around 20 languages. The funding period uh, was extended um, uh, and the, the project will run until 2023. Um, Another important thing to mention um, or to underline once more, that is the collaboration in the context of uh, the Shock project and the afterlife of Shock uh, under the name of SSH Open Cluster. I won't go into detail because that was already discussed extensively yesterday. Um, I could recommend that if you want to see how that uh, looks like in practice, um, uh, especially the, the Federation, Federation of Resources, and the, and the SSH Open Marketplace that will be uh, also um, uh, available for further discussion and and uh, at the at the bazaar uh, here in uh, in the program of later today. Then um, uh, it's also good to underline that why this is so important not only for uh, the facilities uh, in terms of data access and and data. Um, depositing, etc. But given that there is this place where you can uh, find data sets in an interoperable that have been prepared uh, uh, with interoperability uh, as a as the goal, um, it there there will become possibility. There will come possibilities for working on methodological frameworks for working on heterogeneous data for uh, adopting or applying mixed methods to incorporate multimedia in, uh, in the uh, research agendas. So it's not only about uh, data, but this is also an important initiative with the perspective of methodological advancing advancements. And, and of course, it's good to underline that this uh, SSH open cluster um, is uh, supposed to support and enable the collaboration between all SSH research infrastructures. So it started with the SSH ERICs, of which there are five, um, but also uh, newcomers on, on the uh, European agenda for European research infrastructures, the so-called S3 roadmap, uh, will be invited to join that initiative. So it's support for users of cultural data, language data, survey data, and other relevant digital objects. Um, slightly related to these developments, uh, and especially uh, um, related to the um, cross-disciplinary collaboration, it's good to mention that we now have uh, a project ongoing in the Horizon 2020 EOSC Future project. It's called MetaCOVID. It's um, um, an initiative to uh, develop um, alignment, to work on alignment between domain vocabularies on the one hand, the kind of vocabulary that is of use in the SSH domain, but also um, in this case, the health domain. So the COVID terminology from the health domain um, is taken as a starting point for um, uh, linking uh, relevant uh, uh, data from the health domain to the data in, in the parliamentary uh, uh, corpora or the parliament uh, data sets uh, about um, 
the debates, the public debates on, on COVID. Uh, but also um, social media data will be coupled to this uh, initiative and in the end also survey data. Again, uh, this is a project that you can also uh, visit at the bazaar. Um, and a thing that has grown in comparison to things that were reported last year is the fact that the collaboration between the clusters, and this was already alluded to in Francesca Frontini's presentation yesterday, the col collaboration between the five research infrastructure clusters has intensified. Um, the uh, Claren Ambassador Program and other events um, have, have continued um, with webinars and uh, tutorials and, and uh, the Helsinki Digital Humanities Hackathon. Uh, in COVID times, it was difficult to have an active ambassador program, but even with some hybrid or, or uh, virtual events, uh, the current team of ambassadors has uh, um, uh, yeah, sort of revived. And, uh, and we are looking forward to, uh, to the next stages. Then um, uh, we worked on an update on the um, options for support and funding uh, through calls. Um, so um, I will show you the full overview of options, but uh, later on, but there's support possible for the thing we call teaching with Clarin. It's uh, the training suite. We have a, a train and network program um, feel free to have a look because this is actually a place where we could really uh, benefit from uh, from wider engagement and the people in that network would also benefit from that. Um, there's support for virtual events and, of, and we have seed grants for the preparation of European project proposals. Then there is the website and, and outreach material. Um, um, and that, that there was an overhaul um, that started uh, two years ago. The website is now better geared towards the diversity of, of services and audiences. Um, and we also worked on a promotional video. After my presentation, I will try to play it, but I'm not sure if that will immediately work well. Um, maybe the, the technical people of Claring could advise me how to do that. The link is in the slides, but I'd rather do that after my presentation. And anyhow, it will be on the website. Um, an important section in, in the revamped website um, and already announced last year, so it's not totally new. Um, that's uh, uh, the uh, website called, uh, or the webpage called uh, Clarion Impact Stories. Um, there are lots of use cases reported there. It's a place where use cases can be coupled to uh, high quality publications and that uh, describe either the tools or, or the research being used. Uh, it's suited for, suited for uh, wider audiences. Um, it's, uh, it's also coupled to uh, an outreach instrument that we have and that you may know, Tour de Clarin, where we visit uh, national consortia, uh, case centers, etc., to dive into, um, to do a deep dive into the way of working um, outside the, the central organization. Um, and um, uh, as I said, the, uh, the, uh, the impact stories are uh, um, addressing multiple audiences, including audiences beyond academia. Um, well, the promotional video, uh, I already showed you this slide yesterday. I will get back to that one later. But it's maybe good to mention that we have um, uh, th that this work on the promotional video was uh, was done by our communications team that has started to um, with, with some new people in the office uh, among uh, whom uh, Karina Berger and Julia Mirzewski and uh, Elisa, are you there? Elisa is participating in uh, uh, in the event uh, remotely from Amsterdam. Yeah, hi, Elisa. Um, uh, they worked hard on, on, on getting this uh, um, launched. And um, I think it, it is a, a good starting point for uh, visual material, um, visual promotional material uh, for Clarion, because the aim is to use the house style, um, uh, the, the, the first video as a, as a starting point for a house style. And that 
for whichever topic there is a need for additional video material, um, uh, this can be produced. So we will uh, be able to take requests for topical videos uh, in the coming period. Um, well, this is where we stand, but we of course also have uh, some further plans for, for next year. Uh, again, the uh, current um, uh, strategy is leading. Um, and uh, I think there are uh, a few elements in this high level description that is also to be found on the website um, um, could, be un could not be enough underlined because they're very important aspects of the things that we have in mind. So first of all, the datification uh, of society, of culture and society uh, brings a lot of additional potential data sets that could be the basis for work um, uh, uh, done by, uh, or uh, yeah, um, it, it could be the basis for the production of data, but also the analysis of data. And especially the fact that it is, that this datafication leads to um, data sets that cover many aspects of everyday life makes it also a, uh, a development and a perspective that is interesting for parties outside of the research domain, in, including public sector and uh, uh, industry, et cetera. We tend to talk nowadays about um, digital objects and um, machine actionable data sets. Uh, that is um, uh, something that, that will become more and more important uh, to um, also because it helps us in this uh, to, to communicate our approaches to um, uh, other infrastructural initiatives. At the same time, of course, uh, we need to make sure to keep the connection with the uh, digital humanities researchers and the social scientists that uh, um, that are um, uh, or the users of the data and the, and the tools that we have provided. So the research community is not always using the same terminology, but uh, it's inevitable that um, that we uh, will start uh, becoming. Uh, or that we will start getting questions from people working on data science methods and that we will also have to be aware of the fact that researchers are uh, very, especially from the SSH domain, are very much interested in responsible data science practices. As said, we, we created this focus on, uh, uh, on impact um, uh, by, by creating this web section, but there's more... Um, that would uh, that we will be able to do. Um, we, we still want to collaborate with cost actions because that's a very clear pathway towards impactful research. The Horizon Europe Pillar 2 projects uh, are also a good vehicle for that. And we still uh, underline the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we will start working, uh, we will start some work specifically uh, on applications and workflows for um, uh, tools for studying and informing policy responses to global crisis. And we've seen a number of them uh, in the past years. Um, we are also uh, very much uh, interested in uh, developing workflows for a specific field, such as the study of mental health conditions and other tools for health interventions. Um, and uh, of course, there's the application of uh, uh, models based on a, uh, AI methods, uh, artificial intelligence um, is, is a growing field and it's more and more well understood that textual data or speech data uh, is part of that paradigm. Um, of course, we, we've always been aware of this. Uh, we, we talked about artificial intelligence in this field already 40 years ago or longer ago, but uh, in a more contemporary context, uh, more and more parties are now um, putting focus on, on textual data. And we need to be ready for that and have some easy to use workflows for what is needed there. And as said, we will explore models for innovation and collaboration with industry. Um, of course, we will also work further on support for the clever notes. For example, Stronger coordination among case centers is uh, welcome, and we will support it. 
we need um, uh, support for more synergy uh, between the various committees working for Claren. You've seen uh, the roadshow this morning. Um, there's definitely room for a synergy there. Um, and of course, the website uh, needs to uh, stay the, the hub for knowledge exchange and some reinforcement there is, is very, pos very well possible. And then um, there is um, the collaboration with other initiatives um, already addressed many times. So the European Open Science Cloud is no longer a totally abstract notion, but it's now becoming um, something that is leading many of the agendas. Um, yeah. Um, and, and a minor detail maybe, but it's something that is definitely also relevant uh, for the wider network as an, as an organization that is applying for funding. Uh, we need to have a, a gender equality plan in place. We started uh, some work to prepare this. This was led by uh, Julia Miserski. Uh, the initial focus is on uh, the gender equality plan for the central organization. Uh, but the next steps is to also monitor, monitor equality dimensions in the general, uh, in general, in the wider Clarin network. So you will probably hear more about this uh, next year. And of course, we need to think about the 12th um, uh, conference and, and to evaluate the format that we have here to see if we can again organize a hybrid conference. The signals are uh, positive. Okay. I think this is my last slide. I would like to mention to you that we will have a change in the composition of the board of directors. As a new member, and you've already um, seen him on stage several times now, we have Antal van der Bos, who was the successor of Andreas Witt, uh, who left early uh, this year. Um, we still need to organize a decent uh, farewell moment uh, for Andreas, but um, that will come. Um, Daria Fischer will be the next uh, executive director as of January, and Francesca Fontini will start her second term uh, as member of the BOD also in January. And then, as always, there will be Dieter van Uitvank, uh, who is our technical director and, and vice executive director. There's a new structure being implemented in the Claren Office team. As of the 1st of October, we will have Patrice von Boxel as chief operations officer. Uh, are you in the room? Yeah, she's there in the back. So um, for several topics, um, you may um, need to be in touch with her uh, at some point, not immediately because she only started recently, but that's to come. And of course, uh, you can find the details of uh, on the rest of the crowd uh, working in the office uh, on the website. And here are the names of um, the people that uh, have all contributed to uh, the work that I reported. And of course, we also have a some uh, satellites in the orbit um, that are people not employed in the office, but also contributing. You can find them on the website. This is my last slide about a bit of funding and support opportunities. Um, so if you are interested in that, have a look there. <laughs> <laughs>